Hi, my name is Maureen. This is Flow and Restore Yoga Class. We'll combine vinyasa flow and um, put an emphasis on restorative. Restorative yoga um, requires that you have a good number of props. So uh, helpful if you have a bolster like you might find at uh, the studio. Um, or if you don't have that, then you can use a combination of two to four bed pillows. Trying to find um, your firmer pillows is going to be more helpful. If you have thin or soft ones, then you'll, you'll need more of them. Another helpful um, substitute is just a rolled up a second, a second yoga mat or um, these firm rollers, hopefully a little longer than this one. This is the short version. Um, usually we want it to be the length of your torso. Um, and the other thing you'll need is at least uh, two blankets and towels. Um, everybody's are gonna be of a different width. So the more you have, the more you're able to um, adapt and edit. Blocks are also helpful, yoga blocks. And if you don't have those, you can use um, a substitute of a uh, full toilet paper roll or um, hardbound books. All right, let's begin. Take a comfortable seated position and place one of your folded towels underneath your sit bones. Let your ankles be on the mat. And just rock side to side, kind of giving your sit bones a little opportunity to spread apart. Another thing for helping you find a good solid base is to place both hands on the thigh and just internally rotate the thighs in and back and apart. And again, that's just broadening your base. Um, roll your shoulders briefly. We'll take a few moments to quiet down and to draw attention inward before we begin our warm up and then move into our vinyasa. So as you're ready, Lower your gaze or close your eyes if you're comfortable. Take in a nice, big, deep, exaggerated breath. Fill up your lungs. And release that breath. Doing that a couple of times, or as often as you need. Allowing that um, big, exaggerated breath just to sweep through your body, sweep through your mind. Clear it out. Let go of whatever has gone before you today or this week and um, make yourself available and present for this practice. Eventually, as you let go of those deep, exaggerated breaths, and with your attention drawn inward, I want you to take your attention large to include your whole body from head to toe. Just taking awareness of it, noticing how it feels to be sitting in this posture with legs crossed, I invite you to draw your spine up nice and tall, like you're reaching up through the crown of your head. Allow your chest to be open, so pull shoulder blades lightly together on your back, allowing the breath to flow with ease. Feel that your neck is long. You might even just slightly tip your chin, and that has the effect of elongating the back of the neck. And now drop in a little deeper and narrow your focus to the breath. Just observing the breath. First here, practice being the witness of your breath as it moves in and out of your body. And now the breath practice or the pranayama that we'll do today is called Samavritta, equal breath. And we'll just do three rounds of breath. A round of breath is a full inhale and a full exhale. And samavritta means equal, equal breath. So uh, I'll offer a structure of a four count inhale and a four count exhale. Everyone will have a different sense of timing, you, you, the number you will create. But I just encourage you to try that now. wherever you're at with that practice. When you finish your next exhale, release it. 
um, focusing on uh, even lengths of the inhale and the exhale, it brings balance to our body. Bring your hands to meet at your heart in Anjali Mudra. Take a big deep breath in and an even deeper breath out. And release your hands to your thighs, blink your eyes open. Welcome to the practice. Take your hands off to the side, palms face forward. Inhale, arms out wide. Let the arms match the length of your inhale. Lengthen up through the spine. When you're ready, turn your palms away and exhale slowly down. Really tune into your own timing. We'll do three of these and let them successively warm up your body. Inhale, press down through sit bones. As you fill up, let ribs expand. Let the spine lengthen and lift your chin up a little higher this time. When you're ready to exhale, you turn your palms away and slowly lower. Last one. Inhale, arms out wide, pull shoulder blades together as they are at shoulder height. And then rise up nice and tall through your spine and lift up and look up. Exhale, turn palms away. And eventually release at the end of your exhale. Now soften through the arms, rock side to side, soften through your belly. Let's do the Qigong version of that. Palms face down, the joints are all soft. Spread out your fingers um, wide and then say inhale, arms up halfway, exhale, palms up. Inhale, arms up all the way. Exhale, index fingers and thumbs knee. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, bend deeply at the elbows, palms face down as you slowly lower. Good, and let that go. Roll your shoulders back. Exaggerate the movement. Lift them up as high as you can. Press them down as low as you can. And now let's do a seated cat-cow. Cat-cow takes the spine um, forward and backward. And we're just gonna remain here seated and allow the movement in the spine as much as we can. So inhale, arms out wide. Take them behind the plane of the spine if you can as you pull shoulder blades together, lift up your heart, lift up your gaze. That's your inhale. And then exhale, bring uh, arms in, give yourself a hug round the spine, chin to chest, curl forward. This is your cat back. On the inhale, you reverse, open, take the arms back as far as you can, pull shoulder blades together, lift the heart, lift the chin, and exhale, reverse whichever arm was on top, give yourself a hug, curl forward, chin to chest, completely exhale, and release, and let it go. Again, roll the shoulders. You might choose to roll them forward this time. Just giving a uh, little bit of tender loving care to the shoulders, going one at a time is another option. Root down through your sit bones, draw the belly up and in, inhale, sweep your arms up high. Keep your arms straight for our side bend. Let the right hand touch the ground. And just side bend, open up this side of the body, keep both arms straight. Take it down as far as feels good. And then just uh, while you're in your side bend, just allow a little movement with a straight arm uh, uh, the left arm. And now engage your core and lift up. Hands meet up overhead and let's do the other side. Side bend to the left. Keep arms straight. That's the invitation. And go over as far as feels good for that side body and then add a little to it by lifting and lowering your right arm. Keep grounded. Keep both sit bones connected to the mat. And then eventually engage your core and rise back up, both hands meet up overhead. From here we'll twist to the right, arms descend. Find some leverage points for your hands. Take another breath in as you lift up tall through the spine and exhale, twist a little deeper. We'll hold the pose, but you keep breathing. And then release, come forward. Inhale, sweep up nice and tall. Exhale, twist to the left. Find uh, some leverage points for your hands. Take another breath in to lift up tall through the spine. And exhale, twist a little deeper to the left. Keep breathing while you hold your body in this twist. And then release and let it go. And just sort of release everything, so, uh, whatever way feels good for you. Let's come into Janu Shirshasana. Send the left leg forward, the right knee is bent, and the sole of the foot is coming to touch the thigh. I want you to think about um, 
lifting up through the ribs. Uh, take the shoulders uh, down your back and tilt the pelvis forward. So the first thing I want to do is get the foundation, press down through the left heel, pull the toes towards your knees, press down through this right knee. And I'm just going to invite you to twist towards the bent knee. Just adding that in, finding some freedom in, the, in your body. In this pose with your legs in this position. And then I want you to bend forward, not towards this uh, extended leg, just straight forward. Hinge at the hips. You can place your hands at the hip crease. Push your heart toward the ground. Keep your head in alignment with your spine as you do so. And then rise back up. And now I'm going to invite you to place, uh, you know, depending upon your flexibility, to place this left forearm inside of the extended left leg. You, you rotate the ribs so um, your left ribs are coming towards that left extended leg and the right ribs are opening up. And then you allow this top right hand to drape over the side of the head. It's a twist and a forward fold. Just take the body to where it works for you. It, you could support yourself um, uh, by placing the forearm on a block inside your leg if that feels better for you. Hang out here for a minute. Just where it feels okay for you. Press down through that heel. And use your foundation. Press down through this bent knee. And then rise up and let it all go. Let's switch legs. <clears throat> Establish your foundation. Press down now through the heel of the right leg. Pull toes towards knees. Keep this knee connected to the ground and let that be your foundation. Let's just twist to the left knee. Just a light counter twist. Wake up the body. Going the opposite way. Release and come forward. Hands to hip crease. Let's bow forward. We already want to have a little tilt in our pelvis sitting up on this towel. Um, putting zip bones on the towel is uh, an assist for you to already be tilting forward. Find your foundation through that heel, through this side knee. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, pull forward. It might not be very far forward. You rely on your foundation. You should be feeling that as a stretch in the back of the left um, hamstring. Push your heart toward the ground. Go as far as is comfortable for you. Keep your head and neck in alignment with your spine. And then rise up, let it go. Let's come down towards this um, right leg. You turn the forearm, you're trying to come down, which already makes you twist. So think right ribs down towards the right extended leg, left ribs up. And then if it's okay with the shoulder, you're gonna drape that top left arm over the ear. Add the block. Hang out here for a little bit. Open the body. And then release and let it go. Come on up to um, table pose and remove any blanket. From table, we're going right, to go right into our down dog. So tuck your toes, lift your knees off the ground, send the hips up. Allow your body a little time to warm up by walking the dog, one heel down, opposite knee bent. Check in with your head and neck, a little shake of the head, yes and no. And then let's bend the knees and walk the feet toward the hands. Come into a forward fold. Bend the knees deeply. Let's grab a hold of opposite elbows. Crown of the head points down. And just let this passive body opening happen. The weight of the upper body hangs off of the hips. You're welcome to rock side to side. Allowing a little lengthening of the hamstrings, opening of the low back, and opening of the shoulders just by gravity. Release the elbows, hands come to hips, pull the belly to the spine, and press down to rise up. Arms sweep out and up, look up, hands touch. Exhale them to your heart and let it go. Shake it out. And let's go through um, our vinyasa. If you have blocks, you can use them for your lunges. If you don't have blocks, then you'll make do without. Standing at the top of your mat. Uh, rock forward and backward on the balls of your feet, then onto the heels of your feet. And then find your connection. Your feet are like the equal sign. They are parallel, toes pointing forward. Inner hips with distance apart. Press down through firm legs, lift up through the core, and inhale, arms out wide and up high. Look up for a little back bend. 
Turn your palms away and exhale, swan dive your hands out wide as you hinge at the hips and come down into your forward fold, Uttanasana. Point the crown of the head down. You can bend the knees until those hamstrings warm up. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, long legs, long arms, long spine. Exhale, forward fold, hands can touch the blocks or frame the feet as you step back the right foot. Straight leg lunge. And just wake up the hips a little. Uh, be light on your fingertips so that you're relying on the power of the legs and the hips. And then step back, downward facing dog. Feel that each time you come through down dog, you're coming a little deeper into the pose. Stay here for several breaths. Let your body absorb the benefits of this pose. There's an inversion. There's a beautiful lengthening of the spine and lengthening of the back of the leg. On an inhale, shift your body forward into plank. Squeeze everything, activate everything, call upon all the muscles to help you stay here. And then you decide if you let knees touch the ground or if you come down in full plank, but keep elbows close to ribs. Release the weight of your body. Touch the top of your feet down, firm up your thighs and lift your heart up for baby cobra. Elbows bent, point them back towards the feet. Exhale, lower down. Tuck your toes, inhale to table, and exhale, lift your hips up, downward facing dog. Feel the fluid movement, feel the breath power this, and in downward facing dog, you stay here for several breaths, and you slow the heart rate. On your inhale, lift the right foot up long behind you. Exhale, bend the knee, pull it to your ribs, step it forward, straight leg lunge, Lower the hips, lift the heart, be light on fingertips, and then press off back foot. Enjoy the front foot, back in your forward fold, coming full circle. Pull the belly to the spine. As you inhale, reverse swan dive, arms out wide and up high. Look up, hands touch. Exhale, release them to your heart and release them to your side. Let's go again. On an inhale, arms sweep out wide and up high. Look up, Urdhva Sasana. Turn your palms away. Try to hinge at the hips and bow. Let the bow match the length of your exhale. Coming into your forward fold, point the crown of the head down. And inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold. Hands frame the feet as you step the left foot back. Straight leg lunge. Lower the hips, lift the heart, lift the gaze, and be light on fingertips. Lower the back knee and rise up into Andrayasana. Lift up, you might look up, add a back bend. Uh, exhale, come down, let the hands bring the foot. Option to add on to this by lifting the back left foot up and letting the left hand grab it. It becomes a quad opener. If uh, it doesn't feel good to do that, then just point towards that back foot. And release, let it down. Lift the back knee up and step the right foot back straight. Um, Savasana, downward facing dog. Stay here, find stillness. Add to this pose by pressing your shoulders away from the earth, pulling your ribs towards your thighs, and gradually lowering heels down towards the mat. On an inhale, shift forward to plank and squeeze everything. Draw everything to the midline. Strong shoulders, point your heels back, pull your core in, and exhale lower. Release the body. Find your foundation that's pressing down through the lower half of your body and lifting up through the upper half. Deepening your back bend, lift your chin. Exhale lower. Tuck your toes. And we press up with an inhale and an exhale, lift into downward facing dog. Slow the heart rate. Find your uh, position for down dog. Find the right place for your feet and stay here and breathe. On your next inhale, left leg lifts up, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee, pull it to your ribs, step that foot forward, lower the hips for straight leg lunge, be light on fingertips, 
lift your gaze. And then exhale, lower the back knee down to touch the earth. Press down through the front foot and inhale the torso and the spine up. Lift your gaze up, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, hands come down, frame the front foot. Option to add on to this by lifting the back uh, foot off the ground. Right hand reaches back to grab a hold of the foot. We feel this as a quad opening. Release the foot, release the hand, lift the back knee, press off back foot to join the front foot. Come into your forward fold, lift up through the hips, point the crown of the head down and feel your hamstrings warming up. Draw your belly to the spine. Inhale, reverse swan dive, arms out wide. Beautiful long spine as you rise up, reach up, look up. Hands touch. Exhale, release down to your heart and let it go. All right, I am gonna go ahead and switch into our restorative. We'll, we'll go through some more down poses. Um, but just in, in re recognizing that we have a shorter period of time than our usual class. So one nice um, transition pose is a wide a lateral um, stance. Please make sure that your feet are parallel. Uh, you can use a gauge for how far apart to be stepping by um, bending your wrists. So you can extend out a little bit farther than you might think. Um, but you're, you're just giving yourself a sense of where you feel comfortable. Um, from here, now I would like you to bring the heels in. We're gonna um, come into goddess pose. So you bend deeply in both knees and you're trying to see if you can bring the thighs parallel to the ground. I want you to feel uh, steady and stable in your foundation. And if that's all all right, then inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Exhale, bend the elbows at 90 degrees, palms face forward, pull shoulder blades together on your back, and breathe. And now let's rise up, lengthen legs, touch fingertips overhead for pyramid, and exhale, sink into goddess. Just note, we're using this as a transition pose. Uh, lengthen legs, lengthen arms, reach up nice and tall and exhale goddess and stay here for a breath cycle finish that exhale and then let's come out of the pose by lengthening your legs lowering your arms and heel toe heel toe heel toe just march to let that go and then we'll use a malasana a squat to come down to the ground a good um gauge for where to place your feet is to let the side edges of the mat bisect your feet, heels in, toes out, um, but you can experiment with any uh, width for feet uh, that, that serves you. It's not uncommon to be tight in the hips and the groin. Breath in, and then exhale, sink into your squat. Lower down as far as you can uh, that you can comfortably manage and press elbows into knees and let knees resist. Once you're settled, lift your heart, lift your gaze, lift up, activate this rather than just sinking uh, and letting muscles go. I want you to activate the muscles and breathe. And then to come out of it, hands come down, knee comes down. Take a nice breath in and out. And let's move into our first restorative pose, uh, which is supported child's pose. You're familiar with this if you've done restorative. Um, you can tailor it in many different ways. This bolster might be enough. Uh, you're simply finding a way to support and lift the whole spine. So you bring the bolster up right to where it will no longer go any further uh, at the top of your thighs with knees out wide and toes touching. You can always use a blanket if there's tightness um, between uh, hips and heels. And you can add to this height using either pillows or extra blankets. Um, so when you're ready, arms will frame the bolster and you lie your torso down. You want to make sure your head is supported and you turn on one cheek. And you tune in and you adjust. If you don't need those supports, then don't use those supports. If muscles are tight, then that's when you would add uh, a little height 
so that there's not a big um, gap here between your low torso and the support. And take the time to experiment with these restorative poses. If um, it's not 100% delicious, then you haven't reached that restorative pose and you need to keep experimenting. And you could always uh, add a little extra pillow just for the head and neck if there's any tightness in the neck. Um, you wanna meet your body where it's at for restorative and add extra support. Don't suffer through it because we'll stay here for several minutes. And I'll offer um, you to, I'll encourage you to turn your cheek to the other side um, about halfway through. So once you've found that pose, once you've found that relief, it should just feel like you can completely sink into this and forget the outside world. There's no instructions for your breath during the restorative pose. You're just simply finding a release and you're allowing your body to be held. There are um, certain openings of the body. You're, this will be uh, opening your hips and low back and your shoulders. But with the extra supports of the bolster and the blankets, um, it will be a little less opening. Just keep breathing. And if you did want to change your head to, to lie on the other cheek, just to turn your neck the other way, this is a good time to do it. Restorative poses we hold for several minutes. And if you don't have the right props, you could always pause the video um, to go and find things that will substitute. Just one more breath in this pose. When I say one more breath, I mean a full breath cycle, a full breath in. See if you can really sense and tune into the breath filling up the, the back body and the side ribs. And exhale fully. And to come out of this pose, you will press your palms into the mat to lift your torso. The instructions, um, and restorative poses that you move so as not to disturb yourself. Once your spine is upright, you're going to take your support, whatever that is. If you are, don't have a bolster, you're trying to think about pillows that are about uh, four to six inches in height and firm. Um, we're going to take that support and place it um, in the upper third of your mat. And uh, we'll come into a supported um, chest opener and I would like the location of this to be underneath your shoulder blades. We're going to do two different locations. Um, if you are choosing to use this big support, then you'll need something to help support your head. You could use a yoga mat, in which case you wouldn't need anything to support your head. Also, you could use a rolled up blanket in the form of a, uh, like a snake. So I'm going to demonstrate using this. And I want you to be mindful of where it's placed. It's underneath the shoulder blades, the first one. The second one I'm going to invite for the support to be underneath the back low ribs. You want to experiment to find that right location to help find the shoulder blades. Bend your elbows at 90 degrees and then lift your uh, sit bones until you can really feel the shoulder blades supported by um, the, the bolster, the roll towel, the yoga mat. This is a tall support. This is so that I, I would not be able to just let my head hang. If that's okay for you, you, you that's a, that, then you can experiment and try it. Uh, if you have a block or a book, you can support your head on the low height or on the medium height. Just experiment and see what, which one works for you. Uh, the arms should be comfortably 
able to um, be above the bolster support. That's how you know you're in the right place. You can keep the knees bent, feet as wide as the mat, and let knees fall toward one another so that they have um, no effort. Or you can extend the legs long and just let the feet flop open. And just tune in. This should be opening up the whole front body, opening up and spreading the ribs apart, opening up these pectoral muscles. And when you know, when you, you'll know you found the right spot when you can just sigh and release into it. With every exhale, just allow the weight of your body to be held by these props and by the earth. And we'll hold this for a while. If at any point you say you've had enough, then you come out. You come out a little earlier and you can just remove the support and lie flat on your back. Tailor the practice so that it meets you and your body where you're at today. You're welcome to turn on your own music and do whatever, turn the lights down low, really make the environment the way um, you prefer. With your front body so wide open, encourage the breath that inhale to fill up of low belly breathing. One more breath cycle in this pose. We're going to adjust it slightly to lower the bolster support down to the low ribs. When you've finished your exhale, if your knees are not bent, bring them up to the to be bent. Bring your elbows inside and just roll to one side, protecting your neck to help you rise up and bring that support down a little bit lower. So now we're going to be lifting up um, the rib cage and you will need to have a towel or a blanket or a block, something available that's easy to reach for uh, to support your head and neck. So I want you to think um, low rib cage. If it gets too far down to this low back, it's not going to feel comfortable. So experiment and adjust. But it should feel different from the first position. We're trying to lift up a different part of the spine. Lift, working with this thoracic um, part of our spine, which is the rib cage, uh, it is the least flexible part of our spine. So don't overdo it if this is too high. Um, then you could go with a yoga mat or just with a rolled towel. And then you'll have to check in which height of block or a towel or a neck support works for you. Um, and then a choose your leg position. With For me, this is my low ribs. It feels more comfortable for me to have my knees bent. Your arms should be very much at ease and be able to either be at shoulder height or even lower given that this support is down lower underneath uh, the back rib cage. If this doesn't feel good, then um, come out of it by rolling to the side and removing the support altogether and perhaps trying a, a lower support, a thinner support. If it does feel good, then just release into it and recognize that we're separating the ribs away from one another, so really feeling that opening, giving space to all those abdominal organs. And see if you can encourage deep belly breathing.
one more breath in this pose. And when you've fully finished your exhale, if your knees are not already bent, bend the knee. And then just carefully roll into one side, taking care with your spine, taking care with your neck, and press yourself up. Moving slowly, keeping your attention inward, we'll move to the next restorative pose, which is supported crocodile. So I'm turning you from your belly to your back to your belly. Um, you'll need a bolster, and if you don't have a bolster, remember you can use these um, props, but you're going to add to it. So if you used a rolled up yoga mat, then you would add pillows and blankets. Um, so you're getting to be about four to six inches tall, and you want it to be able to support your head and neck. Um, I'm sorry, not the head and neck, just the full torso from pubic bone through to collarbones for this pose. And your forehead uh, will either rest on blankets, uh, pillows, or a block. So let's just show you with the bolster. And then you can pause the video to go and get more props. Um, so lie your, um, from table, lie your pubic bone uh, uh, onto this bolster up to the collarbones. Your face should be to have some space to breathe. Uh, and you'll, you can um, try different heights of the block. There's three heights to a block. Uh, before you settle into the pose, you, you're opening the hips. So um, turn one knee out so it's the inside of the knee and the inside of the foot. And then turn the other leg out. This is opening up the hips, opening up the psoas, inner groin super helpful for us. Um, and then add a little length to the legs. They're not meant to be bent. We bend them to get into the pose. And then you find the resting spot for your forehead and your arms frame uh, the support, what, what's comfortable for your shoulders. And notice that my spine is still in alignment with um, my neck is still in alignment with my spine. So you're going to use the props to find that right location. Uh, one last option is that you allow the hands to meet at the back of the skull or to lightly touch the top back shoulders. And then allow your body to be fully supported. Crocodile pose is a restorative pose. By adding in these blankets, you're softening the hip opening. Um, and you're just trying to tune in to allow your the weight of your body to be fully supported by these props. Your forehead is, um, the head is a very heavy appendage. It is, um, so to have that weight supported in, the, in this energy point of the forehead, there's multiple energy points, acupressure points, acupuncture points. Uh, so with that weight um, uh, pressing in uh, on the forehead, you're activating and stimulating these energy points to move the chi through your body. Adapt and make the pose your own. Find what works for you. And with every exhale, sink a little deeper, release a little bit more, let go a little bit more. Staying right where you're at. Breathing into the support underneath your belly. That can give you a real sense of 
um, the timing of your breath and the smoothness of your breath. One more breath cycle in this pose. And really let your attention just focus on your body and absorb the benefits of this pose as you go through that last breath in and breath out. To come out of the pose like supported child, you're going to press palms um, down to help push your torso up and release that hip opening. Uh, when you come upright, the next pose is supported twist. So again, you can use the existing support if um, you have a lot of flexibility, then you will keep this um, uh, the bolster at this height. Uh, I'll show you different options. I'm going to invite you to place a blanket between knees and ankles for this twist. So that the 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 knees um, and a, and ankles should be stacked on top of one another. Your hips uh, are flush with the edge of the bolster, and then you place either hand or, or your hands on either side of the bolster to add the twist. And you lift up and lengthen. Take a breath in, and then you're lying the torso down, trying to face. Uh, down to the bolster and then turn the cheek. Arms frame the bolster and you release into your twist. If you do this and you find that it's uncomfortable, then you're gonna add, add a blanket uh, or a pillow. And um, you could always lift up uh, by putting a book or um, a block to make a, more of a ramp, which means a, a gentler twist on the spine. So you have lifted, uh, you've got a little ramp. I've got to make sure that uh, this pillow is shorter than my um, length of my bolster. So I'm going to make sure that my head and neck are even. Use a towel, at twist, lay yourself down. Uh, you tend, we tend to start this pose with um, your head facing uh, the bent knees. But if you would like to add more to it, then you lift up and turn your head the other way, it's, um, it's giving you a deeper twist, a double twist in the spine and in the cervical neck. Either way, you will stay here for a little bit, so you can try it out, you can experiment. If you get, um, if you've had enough of one variation of the pose, then um, unwind into a, a, a lesser variation or challenge yourself into a deeper variation. So breathing into this, twists are so beneficial. We want to always encourage mobility in the spine and doing it so gently in these poses um, is, is just a, a really tender loving care for your body. With each exhale, release a little bit more into the props. Trying to keep knees stacked. Um, I'm hoping that blanket between the knees and the ankles will help you to keep them in alignment in this twist. All right, I'm going to bring you out of this so that you can twist the other way. So you let the hands press down to help you lift your torso up and moving quietly mindfully, you turn around so that the other hip is now flush with the base of the bolster. You can bring that blanket um, between knees and ankles. So let the knees stack on top of the knees and the ankles stack on top of the ankles. Twist so that arms frame the bolster. Take a breath in, lift and lengthen through the spine and then lay the body down. First, turn your head towards the bent knee. Check in, see how that feels. 
add the props, lift, uh, put a lift underneath it or add a blanket or a pillow if this is too much. Uh, if it's not enough, then you might try lifting the, the torso up and turning your head the opposite way of your knees. And when you've found the right position and the right placement, sink into it. Let go. Just for a few minutes. If you sense that you're holding in anywhere, then draw your attention there and breathe into those muscles. If it won't go away, if that tension won't go away, then try to do something to ease the pose, to make the opening a little bit less. Take one more breath in this pose. And when you finish that exhale, press your hands into the mat to lift your torso up. Your knees a blanket. The last um, pose, which will um, also be, I'm inviting this pose to be your last pose of Shavasana, is legs up the wall. Um, Depending upon your floor surface, you might want to rearrange your mat so that it is um, short end of the mat against the wall. I'm here with a carpet, so it's it's okay. I'm gonna just move over to the wall to come up into legs of the wall. Um, turn your one side. I've got my left side facing the wall. Uh, it's not that easy to get into the pose, but worth the effort um, once you're there. So you kind of come back onto elbows, you sweep the legs are up, and you come onto your back. Once you're on your back, I'm quite far away from the wall, about six inches, so lift, um, press into elbows, and you just wiggle your sit bones and your shoulder blades a little closer uh, until your sit bones are nearly touching the wall. And then you let the weight of the legs be held by the heels. Your arms, you can place them wherever feels good for you. Traditionally, they are out to the side, a good foot away from the body with palms facing up. And then you just release into this pose. Your back, your spine should be fully supported and level. The weight of your legs is being held. And this is reversing blood flow from feet to heart to brain. This is a great position or pose to take before going to bed at night. It gives your adrenal system a break. It gives your lymphatic system a break. And those are two systems that hold, um, that, that are working 24 seven for us fighting off either um, internal invaders of bacteria or external viruses and whatnot. Um, so giving these two systems a little break is very healthy, helps strengthen them, refresh them, renew them so that they can keep you healthy. You have options. You can stay right here if this is um, good for you. You can also bend the knees and just let the soles of the feet touch, almost you know, coming into uh, a place where you could wrap your arms around the shins. You could keep your knees bent and let the soles of the feet touch to allow this to be a hip opening. And you could also take um, the feet, the legs wide, 
Still let the heels connect so they hold up the weight of the legs. But you might find that you can have a um, bigger a wide legged opening because you're not holding up the weight of your spine. So just tuning in and just seeing what feels right for you. You want to have as little effort as possible. This is a restorative pose, but I'm also using it as Shavasana, the last pose of a yoga practice where you let go of effort. Begin to deepen your breath. Add small movement to fingers and your wrists. Wiggle your toes. Move the ankles. Turn your head one way. And gently turn it the other. To come out of legs up the wall, you bend both knees and you roll to one side. And you gently press yourself up to come back to a seated position. Keep your attention inward, keep your eyes lowered or closed. Eventually bring your hands to meet at your center, at your heart, in Anjali Mudra. And bow your head, bow to yourself, bow to your heart, bow to your intention. And I share this mantra. I welcome the peaceful awareness deep in my heart, the seat of my strength, the home of my spirit. Take a big deep breath in and an even deeper, slower, smoother breath out. And then join me in offering this greeting to share between us and to uh, the people within your house and the people within your community. This Sanskrit word, this greeting, namaste, it means the light within me sees the very same light within you. Namaste. Thank you for your practice.